You have the boy's magic. No, this magic belongs to no boy. the trailer for the remake of Peter Pan, I really didn't have high hopes, mainly because all the remakes that Disney has shot out so far, sorry, YouTube demonetization, shirted out so far, have been absolutely dog shirt. It's not hard to see why people would have a problem with what they see in the trailer, because compared to the latest live action remake of Peter Pan, this looked aggressively lifeless, as if they were trying to make it look lifeless on purpose. Lifeless. When compared to the 2003 remake, Tinkerbell had personality. Every environment in which the Lost Boys, Peter Pan, or Wendy and her brothers went into had personality. There was color and everything felt inviting, like they were really in a magical world. And most of all, with the soundtrack, coupled with the acting prowess of all the main characters, it made the story unforgettable. And dare I say it, a much better high quality production than whatever this lifeless, horrible excuse for a Peter Pan remake is supposed to be. Seriously, they managed to make Tinkerbell look extremely pretty, but yet to fit the stereotypical pretty girl who only got the role because of her looks, she is vapid and completely void of character, and her acting sucks. Which is saying a lot, considering that she has no lines to speak of except for the very end of the movie. Is it your foot? Is it your... Why is she making a duck face? It's like she's trying so hard to pose for an Instagram photo that she forgets that she's actually supposed to be acting. It is your main purpose of being in this movie, or one would hope so, or is it another reason? So Disney, in all their tone deafness, portrays the brown-skinned Tinkerbell breaking into the rich white people's home and setting the faces of the little kids aglow, which is kind of strange because then when you look at Tinkerbell in the next shot, there is no glow being emanated from her. I don't know why everything in this movie, including the fairy that's supposed to be the brightest thing in this movie, ironically, has to be so freaking dark. Is this North Korea? Is there a quota on the amount of light that they're supposed to have in this movie? It seems as though these modern remakes are just devoid of light and color for some reason. Is it that much more expensive to saturate things? Or I don't know, give a little bit more brightness to a dark-skinned fairy that would require more light to be lit effectively? How are these people going to claim that they're all for diversity and inclusion, but the one portrayal of Tinkerbell that happens to be a dark-skinned girl is the most gloomy and dark and uninspiring and cheerless version of Tinkerbell we have ever seen? When they capture her, I swear this is the only time in the entire movie where she sheds any light whatsoever, where it actually looks as though she's releasing a glow. The rest of the time, and for the majority of the movie, it looks as though she just dipped herself into alligator swamp water and came up with all the stuff still stuck to her body. W what is this? The 2003 remake, whenever we see Tinkerbell, it is always obvious that she is there. There is always attention being brought to her because she's literally glowing in every scene. We can see her reactions and she feels like an actual character. The one thing I love about this portrayal of Tinkerbell is she's not the prettiest Tinkerbell, but it doesn't matter because she is character. She's memorable and she's lit like a fairy. photo from this movie and compare it from the still photos of any other remake, including the original. You'll be left wondering if they shot this in a dark closet, if this is supposed to be the Slender Man rendition, the creepypasta version of Peter Pan. If they were making into this a horror movie, I would understand. I would actually be in full support of it. Not to mention that the characters match their environment. Whichever one of the writers or the executives that are responsible for this creative decision or lack thereof, clearly are some kind of demonic vampires because they have essentially sucked the soul out of this entire movie. They talk about going to Neverland, and first of all, when you're actually able to see anything, which you often cannot unless you're some kind of freaking Madagascar nocturnal animal that can see in the dark effectively, it's so unbearably underwhelming that it either elicits one of two emotions. One, boredom, or two, repulsion. Even in the close-up shots of Tinkerbell, they not only manage to not light her correctly, but they make her look hideous. What is it? Ugh. And how is it? What is wrong with the directors? How is it she manages to only have one job, which is to be expressive without using words? She still sucks at it. 
You think it gets better as the movie goes on, but it gets exceedingly worse, to the point where seeing Tinkerbell on screen just becomes so annoying and unnecessary. At this point, if they had made her a faceless mannequin that was green, that probably would have had a little bit more life and intensity than whatever it is that they told this actress she's supposed to be doing. I wouldn't be surprised if this was her first acting gig, because good night, force of nepotism is strong within this one. So they're flying off to Neverland, but you can't see shit, and then there's this freaking Phantom of the Opera, I don't know what's going on here, doing it for artistic quality, thinking this is going to add any quality to the movie. This movie so far beyond the shitter that nothing that they do at this point will help. And then we're supposed to get this big reveal. We hear the swelling music, there's this buildup of tension, as Tinkerbell lets Wendy know to look up. Neverland is in the distance, and we think we're going to see something special. So to give you some comparison, let's look at the remake. Let's look at what Neverland looks like. As a matter of fact, let's look at the original. And there's a smile in your heart. Look at the anime shot of Neverland. It's scintillating, it's beautiful, and it's obvious that this is a magical place, unlike anything that they've seen. It's fantastical, and clearly obvious that they are someplace outside the realms of their reality. Check out the reveal for the 2003 remake. <laughs> Would you look at that? See, the swelling music coupled with the visuals lets you know that this is a magical adventure. It already is working with your emotions to make you feel as though there's a grandiose adventure ahead of you and it delivers. <laughs> Do you hear the music? Do you see the visuals? You see the sun rising up from behind the horizon of the mountain. The clouds are a glow and a light with the sun's rays. There's an angelic presence about the place. It lets you know this is a place that nobody else knows about. There's this ethereal quality to it. Now check out the reveal for the new and improved 2023 modern rendition of Peter Pan and the reveal of Neverland. Oh, it's gonna be nothing you've ever seen before. It's gonna knock your freaking crusty ass socks off. Um, excuse me, what the actual fuck? Like, how do you go from this to freaking this, bro? What is that? If you were to show a child all three of these pictures and put them side by side, which do you think the children would believe is Netherland? or a very magical place. You know, that's providing that they can even see the third choice. And it doesn't get better. It doesn't get better. It's literally, it looks like a lump of coal in the middle of the ocean. There's no defining features about it. It looks flat. It looks as though people couldn't be bothered. So they took a stock photo of some random freaking island somewhere when it was like dusk and they went out of their way to strip it of color and contrast and make it darker than it probably already was. If they even had put a little bit more saturation in the thing, maybe it could have looked like something. I mean, they have stock photos up there of Jamaica and other islands in the sea, and none of them look like this. Even this very old drone footage of some random island looks so much better and more like Neverland than this nightmarish island that they have chosen to make look like a magical place. Like I said, I think these people got the wrong idea. I think they were given the wrong directives for making this movie. The editors probably thought they were shooting a horror film, which is why the whole film looks like this. Oh, you see it? Is that Neverland? Yes, thanks for telling us. Thanks for telling us. Because in this case, I wouldn't know. I'm still waiting for whatever Neverland is supposed to be, and I would have no idea that's what it was. So then they do a fly through of just green islands and just 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 drone footage of freaking puzzle piece mountains, and this is supposed to be Neverland. Or the, I, ugh. I cannot help but draw a comparison. Like even the sun. Look at the magicalness of this whole thing. The reveal of this Neverland. Even the freaking sun has a face. I only now just noticed, I watched this movie a million times, and I've only now just noticed that the freaking sun is Zeus. And as his rays reveal the majesty of Neverland, you can see that it is truly a magical place. Peter Pan and his new friends are on the clouds, and it looks as though this place is truly something from out of a dream. A heavenly 
picturesque adventure book. Like they're in a storybook. Peter Pan is a jerk sometimes, but he's also very charismatic and likable. The kids look like they're having fun. Even the pirates have so many different colors. You know, like real people would. Seriously, did they get child laborers to work on this movie? In the shots with even the pirates, everything looks as though it is exactly the same color. It's sepia. These are the kinds of shots or the kind of colors you would expect to see in films from like the 1950s or 40s when people didn't have color and everyone was black and white. You might as well had shot the movie in black and white. This is also the worst rendition of Captain Hook I have ever seen. And don't get me wrong, this guy's a good actor, but I feel as though he is undervalued in this movie by far. So Wendy seems to lose some of the pixie dust powers after being washed up on shore. After the so-called experienced Peter Pan almost gets them killed by not paying attention and they should have died there. Last time I checked, I don't think pixie dust protects you from explosions, but hey, it's a, it's a little kid's movie, why not? Wendy washes up on shore and she runs to the top of this hill to try and see if she can see her brothers. However, she doesn't look the least bit broken up about it. I don't know if this is just the actress or her character is just complete shit. But I'll give them that, they're staying consistent with her character. I feel like she's the kind of big sister that tried to smother her little brothers in their sleep. And then the next part of the movie crops up, which is, it just bangs my bones together to make music. Tiger Lily was one of the characters from the older film. She's Native American, and I feel as though they are taking every opportunity to bang it over your head so that you remember and are very aware of it. Excuse us. She's not crying though. She actually does not care whether or not her brothers are dead. There are no tears. Do you see any tears? So this girl is speaking another language, Tiger Lily. She doesn't know if this woman can speak her language, but you would think since she lives on an island with a whole bunch of other Caucasian kids that don't speak her language, and she doesn't know this person, and usually when people come from another world that look like her, it's very fair to assume that they probably don't speak Cree, that you would speak English, which Tiger Lily does have the ability to do. What have you done with Peter? I haven't done anything with Peter. Wendy Tikia. Did you bitch? You just heard her speak English. Does it look like she can understand you? You know what? Let's 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 give her the benefit of the doubt and say that she just probably automatically assumes that Wendy can understand her because she's so used to speaking to the other kids and they can understand her which would make her pretty stupid, which does not make Native Americans look very good. So if that's what they're trying to do in this movie, it sucks to be them. It's very offensive. Are you the Wendy? Well, I'm a Wendy. The Wendy Peter. You've gotten a response from someone who speaks English when you speak English to them. That's established. You would think that this Native American girl would keep speaking in English. She's fluent in it. Peter Pan speaks in English. And she's close friends with Peter Pan. Yet, she finds it necessary to continue speaking in her language when she knows that Wendy can't understand her, but she's directing questions at Wendy when you know Wendy doesn't speak your language, as if she's magically supposed to understand you. Furthermore, this person that they've also casted cannot act either. What are you talking about? Mr. Wimanche. She can't understand you, dummy. Even when she's speaking in her language, she's still, it, it's actually worse than when she's speaking in English, the acting. The acting is atrocious. She's lifeless, she's forgettable. It seems as they only casted her for the part because of obvious reasons. The same reason they did with Tinkerbell. Boys. Every last one of us. But you're not all boys. So? But I guess it doesn't really matter. Then why are you calling yourself the Lost Boys? Why haven't you changed it to the Lost Children? Wow, what a cringe scene. It would have been more tasteful if they said, yeah, it started out that way, but now we're girls, deal with it. Wendy discovers that her brother has been captured by pirates. By the way, Peter is nowhere in sight. John and Michael meet Captain Hook, who decides to execute them. And because all the adults are stupid, even though the kids are kind of stupid too, they don't realize that among them, someone's wearing a fake beard that they've never seen before, who actually is revealed to be Peter Pan. <laughs> Oh, he's just showing off. He's not showing off yet. What is this shit? Well, uh, don't want to sound like a dick or nothing, but uh, it says on your chart that you're fucked up. Now he's showing off. Kill them all! Kill them all! So this is the first 
time we see Peter Pan interacting with Captain Hook, and whereas the old versions of Peter Pan evoked some sense of charm, bravery, and experience, this Peter Pan feels as though the movie creators were trying to rush through making this movie, and so they found someone randomly passing by the establishment and said, hey you boy, wanna read these lines? Pretend you're Peter Pan. And this was his rough draft and first take, and they said, you know what, good enough, because they couldn't be bothered. Because the truth is, nobody actually cares about making this movie good. Why would they? Why waste precious colors of the rainbow? Why waste money getting good actors? Why put an ounce of effort into a Disney movie for the modern audience? It's almost poetic because it seems as though these movies are being made for a specific target audience. The target audience are emotionless, hapless, and boringly dismal individuals. And so it only stands to reason that this is the type of entertainment that would be perfect for such beings. You're looking a little worse for wear, old man. You sure you wouldn't be happier back in your sick bed? Even Captain Hook is confused as to why Peter Pan is talking as though he has a mouthful of Vaseline. So there's a boring, heroic battle that looks like a bunch of college students got together with a bunch of kindergartners, and they're all LARPing. And then the only decent scene in the movie is when the crocodile shows up. Like, they put all their ounce, as what can possibly be misconstrued as effort, into making the alligator, sorry, the crocodile look as though it's trying its best to eat everyone. And ordinarily, I would have no problem with this. But the majority of the atmosphere of this movie is so blindingly smart money and nasty. Even this glorious scene is forgettable at the end of the day. I'm sorry, but this Peter Pan looks like an asparagus. Look at his costume. Look at his neck. Look at these angles. And don't give me the, oh, it's because he's a freaking mixed kid. No, I have seen lots of kids from the same ethnic background. And I'm sorry, they look loads better than this kid. Usually when you want someone to be a hero or the staple of a franchise, you get someone who looks the part. And I'm sorry, this does not look like Peter Pan. He does not look the part. He does not feel the part. I would think the redeeming quality of this casting would be the acting, which we were all waiting to see be demonstrated in this movie. What acting? He's shorter than everybody else. Even though he's supposed to be the main character, which I guess again we were fooled into thinking for some reason, he is shrunken down in stature physically and character-wise, especially when next to Wendy. Well, that was fun. Wow, how stunning and brave. This is supposed to be for the modern audience, but all I see is them portraying Wendy as a villain and giving all the women in this movie very bad qualities who are supposed to be the ones we're rooting for. Bitch can't act. Bitch is annoying. Can't act. Can't act. Tell me, what's supposed to be likable about a character that's a foot taller than the main character that uses brutal force on the person who ended up saving her? And then I kid you not, Wendy starts arguing with Pita because she wants to correct him in saying that he did not save the day, he only sort of saved the day, and that he needed her, the female fairy, and the female Native American girl to save him and do his bidding. Because don't you know, this is the modern age where every Disney movie that had a main character that was male must be pushed aside to make it known and established that he is nothing without his female counterparts and it's not possible that he can in the least stand on his own or save them. If you have a snatch, you're not allowed to be saved by someone who has a latch. It's just forbidden. It was an adventure. Isn't that what you wanted? Yes, but I didn't think that meant being shot out of the sky by pirates. That's literally the stories that you read about that you know were adventures. I mean, what did she think an adventure was? having a freaking coffee on the side of the road while you watch the pigeons screw each other? It's not like she didn't read the stories of Peter Pan. She knows exactly what these stories are about. So how was it coming as a surprise to her that Peter Pan, who is known for fighting pirates, has a run-in with pirates? Is she an idiot? Chickabell, I don't understand you. What are you saying? And then she starts yelling at Tinkerbell. You didn't yell at the Native American girl when you couldn't understand her, did you? But Tinkerbell starts ringing her cowbell, and I can understand how incessantly it's very annoying. She's the one who is very short with Tinkerbell and frustrated with her, but yet, she tries to make Peter out to be the villain. Or so the writers of this movie make Peter out to be the villain. Because even though in every other portrayal of Peter Pan, Tinkerbell and Peter Pan are close and they can understand each other, in this one, it so happens that Peter Pan can't understand Tinkerbell because he doesn't respect her and he didn't take the time to listen and her voice matters. I shit you not, that is exactly... That is exactly what they play upon in this movie, and Wendy even says it at the end of the movie, and it's so cringe-inducing. What she's saying is, I saved the day. You sort of saved the day. You saved part of the day. And it's not like you had any help at all. No. This is the part where she starts to go into how you didn't have any help. We helped you save it. Because, you know, 
Peter Pan is a boy, and he's always the one who's the hero in his own story. But you know, his friends kind of helped too, and all the girls helped you. You didn't say anything about us. That's why this is called Peter Pan and Wendy, not just Peter Pan. I don't know why Wendy is so sore about this. This coming from the person who was so willing to throw her own brothers under the bus and not take responsibility for her actions. The one who is so narcissistic and full of herself is getting upset because somebody else actually rescued her, and he didn't give you credit for sorta kinda helping him. I don't ever need help. You have a magical fairy that makes you fly! And a gaggle of children that do your bidding with a princess that cleans up your messes while you're off gallivanting with pirates! Oh my god. <laughs> Is this the modern take they were talking about? Yes, he has all those things, and you have the face of a 45-year-old woman! Okay, that's below the belt. But seriously, she is so annoying and her character is so disgusting that it makes her look like a witch. The only time I can ever remember her smiling is, wait a minute, I don't actually ever remember her smiling in this movie. I'm sure she does. For the majority of the movie, her face looks like this. Like one of those Pirate of the Caribbean demonic mermaids that try to drown people. Seriously, it would have been better if they casted her as one of those. Which, by the way, never appeared in this movie. They only saw the mermaids when they were entering Neverland, and the mermaids look like jellyfish cracking things. But no, they're too bright and colorful, so we can't really show them for some reason, because I guess the creators of these movies are allergic to color now and saturation. Do you really think that you could beat Captain Hook on your own? <laughs> you are a cunt, cunt. What's even more annoying about Wendy is the fact that they keep cutting back to this freaking duck-billed platypus person who either has something going on with her lips or she's keeping them like that because she thinks it's making her look cuter. It's not. If I were the director, I'd be like, bitch, what are you doing with your lips? This isn't a casting couch. Tuck them back in. Keep their mouth closed. And Tiger Lily gives her some girl talk and some encouragement saying, you know, well, you'll find it in your heart and write out on your own and blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares. All the Lost Boys are here and you can't tell who's who from who because everyone kind of blends in together because of the color palette, which consists of every hue of Oscar green. Tinkerbell, of course, is off to the side looking sad because, oh, boo-hoo, no one hears her or can understand her or actually takes the time to listen. Why do they keep cutting back her Tinkerbell? Bell is so annoying and unnecessary because she literally adds nothing to the story. She's completely devoid of character. And in the name of them falsely trying to posture representation, they've in fact done a disservice to her. Not only giving her this role, but allowing her to be portrayed as this vacuous and forgettable version of Tinkerbell. She's not tinkering. Wendy sings a lullaby and she still can't understand Tinkerbell. She lets her know that she can't understand her again. And she says, I don't think Peter can either. <laughs> Oh, I just love how this movie just ugh, really tries to hammer home that Peter is nothing. Why did they even put Peter in this movie? It should have been called Wendy, just as I called it. Because understand this, with how they're going with the movie, you can guarantee that by the end of the movie, they're foreshadowing her being able to understand Tinkerbell. And if Peter can't understand Tinkerbell, which makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, Wendy's gonna be the one to understand her. I wish I could understand you. I don't think Peter can either. Battery doesn't listen, does he? Wow. That was a whole point of them being friends. He could understand her. That was one of the elements about Peter being magical. The fact that he could talk to a fairy. Why would Peter Pan have his closest friend and not attempt to hear her or listen to her? It makes absolutely zero sense. But somehow, he and the Lost Boys completely understand Cree and took the time to learn because they were around Tiger Lily and her family for a long time. But yet, Tinkerbell that has been there from the beginning, he can't understand her? Are you being for real right now? What in the shoehorning whale ass? His loss, not yours. I'm sure you have simply wonderful things to say. Yuck. Wendy learns later that Peter Pan was actually friends with Hook, whose real name is James. Peter Pan claimed that Hook left because Neverland was never good enough for him, and when he came back, he was grown up and evil. We learn later that Peter Pan just flat out lied, and it was actually he who banished Hook because Hook missed his mother. But Peter Pan left that out. He and Wendy are perfect for each other. They're both narcissistic and they're both villains. Peter Pan and Wendy indeed, the assholes of the century. Anyway, Hook heard her singing, which is strange because they make it seem as though he only found them because of Wendy singing the lullaby to the Lost Boys. However, this old room used to belong to him and Peter Pan. So how would you not remember where it is? 
you didn't just come back from the island. You've come back a long time ago and you've been here for a very long time. So you wouldn't remember where your old room was with your best friend. Seems like a weird plot device. Anyway, he ends up slashing Peter Pan. Peter Pan realizes that dying is probably not going to be so fun. And then this is the only time I kind of sort of feel sorry for him. Sort of. I mean, I didn't cut him that deep. But anyway, Peter Pan falls and we get a Spider-Man recreation of Gwen Stacy falling and Spider-Man not being able to save her. And this is the close-up scene where this is supposed to look as though Tinkerbell is absolutely horrified that Peter is falling to his death. Yet this is the look she has on her face. Does that look as though somebody is outraged or absolutely terrified that they're about to lose someone? They even do different takes. I don't know about everyone else, but I do know in film school, they usually have one scene and a hundred shots for that scene. So you mean to tell me, this is very telling, because providing that they actually did their job, you mean to tell me that this is the one shot out of possibly hundreds of shots that was what they claimed was the best? Then what the hell did the others look like? Because good grief, this ain't it. Like I said, this does not help us women because people see shit like this and they don't take us seriously because they say stuff like, oh, you got this role because you're pretty or you got this role because you suck dick. Like that is literally what people say. And then can you blame them? Because throughout this entire movie, not saying a word, not needing any dialogue, this person's acting is atrocious. And I know I keep harping on it, but that's how bad it is. It is so bad that it stands out against everything else in this movie. It actually would have been better if they kept her far away like they did in that play. It's hard to believe that the 1976 flashlight prop version of Tinkerbell had more character than this actual human being attempting to play a mute fairy. Tinkerbell? Found it yet? Well, where is it? Which bit? I'm Peter Pan. And as badly acted as this was, the musical version of Peter Pan where a woman is playing Peter Pan actually has more soul and character than the actual Peter Pan, this creepypasta reject of a movie. Anyway, Tinkerbell fails. I don't know what she was attempting to do, but she gets caught. Peter Pan is like, I'm dead and drops through the floor. It's actually kind of comical. I don't know why I laughed at that. I don't know why Bassmouth over here feels bad. The punch you gave him was almost as hard as he hit the floor. Learn that Peter is actually an asshole to Hook and that Hook has a very tragic backstory because his mama, that's all he wanted, and Peter Pan didn't allow him to. How sad. Peter Pan's shadow went to get Tiger Lily, who saves Peter Pan, because Peter Pan is not the main hero of the story, even though it's called Peter Pan and Wendy. I'm sorry I'm yelling. Poor Peter, he lost his powers. Unable to fly, guess what? Da -da -da -da. You need Tiger Lily to help you. Boss bitch moment, right? Wendy, for the first time in her life, realizes that she might have to be a good person and offer to sacrifice herself for her brothers and for the rest of the kids. I guess she's starting to grow up, right? She's still an unlikable, disgusting character. Sorry, I've spent the whole majority of the movie hating her because they've set her up to be hated for the majority of the movie, that when she finally does something that's supposed to be redeemable, all I can think is it's the least she could do and it feels forced and unearned. She looks like she's having a stroke in this still. And that's exactly what my face looked like while I was watching this movie. I just couldn't wait for it to end and I had it playing at two times the speed and it just was not ending fast enough. God damn that guy has a powerful mouth. This dude and his brother in the back have some powerful freaking jaws, man. Why are they worried about a crocodile in the freaking ocean where there's two of them on the ship? At least the one redeeming quality about the movie, if you can call it that, was the fact that the song was actually fire. Oh, Smee puts Tinkerbell on a post where it's easy for her to get knocked down off of. Many things happy thoughts. And Tinkerbell's like, I can't let her die. Oh, oh, close up shot. Let me just puff out my duck lips. Let me do the duck lip pose. Like, I know she's absolutely gorgeous, but that's literally the only thing about her that's noticeable. It's the whole fashion model trope. Can you act though? I mean, cause have you seen Leonardo DiCaprio? Half the guys that are handsome, they look bad as F and they can act. Anyway, Wendy thinks happy thoughts that include her growing up taking piano lessons, growing older, celebrating with her family and writing her novels and then dying by herself or in her old years, she's completely alone. Maybe that's what she wants, I guess. Last part looks a little bit depressing, but I guess that's a happy thought for her, dying by herself in her home. Why not? Tinkerbell just happened to break out and what was supposed to be the climactic version of the Peter Pan movie is now used ahead of time for no reason. I don't know why they would do this. 
It's just so misguided. But we find out that Wendy got the pixie dust and that's how Tinkerbell saved her from going into the ocean. Peter Pan didn't save her, Tinkerbell did. <laughs> really annoying. So as Wendy sends over the ship like the effigy of Christ, Hook exclaims that she has the power of the boy, to which our savior, messiah, and lord replies in all her judiciousness, the words that will stick with every generation there and after. No, this magic belongs to no boy. But what's a captain without his ship? <laughs> anyway, Tiger Lily comes in to save the day with Peter Pan riding bitch on the back and he jumps in to save his friends. And while they're engaged in battle and Hook probably would have won, Wendy thought it was a smart idea to cover everyone up so nobody can see what they're doing. And then Tiger Lily has to join in on the fight so she hangs on to the anger of the ship and all of them start busting ass. Annoying ass Tinkerbell's neck becomes saran wrap. She does some goofy ass freaking dance and is basically useless. And then we get a cringy scene when Tiger Lily comes upon the ship. And now this scene was not earned, at least not in my opinion, because she's such a background character that this is supposed to be some kind of big reveal or heroic opportune moment when everyone starts cheering. But it just left me so uncomfortable because it felt mad awkward. <laughs> Okay. Then even though Tiger Lily is speaking in Cree and Michael and John, Wendy's brothers, have only been in Neverland for about a day, they somehow know exactly what Tiger Lily is saying when she says in her language for them to get behind her. A bisak, a bad hair. How do they understand what she's saying? Your sister can't understand what she's saying, but somehow they've magically learned exactly what she's saying in the moment they need to understand her saying it. Anyway, the girls do most of the work, getting rid of all the pirates on the ship, and Peter Pan almost dies, but as he falls, unable to have a good grip, Wendy catches him. Oh my god, I got you, baby. And she gives him her pixie dust thing, like they could... So wait a minute, they could do this the whole time? Why is it when she went to Neverland, he never did that for her? Or Tinkerbell didn't give them back the power to fly? you think that would have been an important thing to give them, since, you know, pirates are after them? Then Peter Pan apologizes to Hook for having been a bad friend. He drops his sword, and Hook is like, you don't get to do that after you ruined my life. Wendy, seeing all of this, decides to vanquish Hook anyway. Peter Pan fails to save Hook, and he drops into the ocean. This is the time that Peter Pan, after having tried to kill him all those times, starts crying by saying he was his friend. And you're just now realizing that because some girl told you that? But yet you chopped off his hand and fed it to a crocodile. But now you're crying. Sociopathic. Ew, get your face out of here, man. Oh, she's so annoying. Then Wendy, after this ordeal while Peter Pan is crying, doesn't really console him. She just says, let's go home, Peter. It's time to take these boys home, don't you think? And they take the ship back home and she hugs her mom and apologizes. And then her parents find out she has a room full of all these kids that just came out of nowhere. And all the kids just magically decide that they just all want to go back when there was no lead up to that whatsoever. What are these people supposed to do with all these children. Most of them are probably going to go into the foster system if they do have that at that time, or they're going to be given away to other families. And having grown up with the problems that they had and in the wilderness the whole time, these kids are going to have a lot of problems. They're not going to just by default be well-behaved kids. And most families, especially in the upper class, which is where this whole region is, are not going to want to put up with kids like this. So a lot of these kids are probably going to end up being treated poorly, end up in the same situation that they were in the first place, where they were unhappy and Peter had to take them away. Peter is sad and we find Find out that this used to be his home and he actually missed his mom which is why he kept coming back but she was long dead when he tries to make him feel better i still don't like her character she tries to get him to come back to stay but the ship breaks away and he decides to leave the parents see the ship and they think it's magic and then remember tinkerbell cannot be understood by anyone even though peter is her oldest and closest friend in this specific version of peter pan peter pan is an asshole so he can't even understand tinkerbell not because he can't understand her just for the sake of not being able to understand her but get this because he never listens. And now I guess that they're leaving. Wendy decides that she's not an asshole anymore and she's actually going to listen to Tinkerbell. Wendy, thank you for hearing me. 
If all you had to do was go up to people's ears and talk to them, why didn't you do so from the beginning? Um, okay? Does everybody in this movie lack comprehension skills? Is every character in this movie just perpetually stupid? I mean, all it took was her going up next to her ear and whispering for her to understand. And she wasn't even listening at that point. You don't think you could have done that with Peter Pan when he was sleeping? There was no point at any time. This, this character, Peter Pan, is probably like hundreds of years old. And you mean to tell me in all of the centuries he's been alive, he has never once heard or understood Tinkerbell? Or could this just be the forced shoehorning bastardization of the character simply because Wendy is female, she she listens, and because Peter Pan is male, he couldn't possibly. This movie, oh my goodness. So Wendy carves her name next to Peter Pan's because whatever, it's not earned, nothing is earned. Peter Pan makes it back to Neverland, and I guess they insinuate that he and Hook are gonna be friends once again. Ugh. Ugh. I can't tell you how I started pulling the strands out of my follicles watching this disgusting movie. It was so palatable. It was so distressing to watch. I feel like even if this had been my first time, this is not something I would have watched. I would have flicked off. Or if it was just going on in the background while your friends are over and you're playing tic-tac-toe or something, it's a nice background thing to have. If you can even call it that. Because half the time you can't see what's going on. And the rest of the time, everything is just the same palette. Every scene is either green, blue, gray, or colorless. After I watched this movie, I actually forgot every aspect about it. And the only thing that I remember is how horrible when Wendy was, and how useless Tinkerbell was. Peter Pan was not even the highlight of the movie. What was even the point of them having made this? The grief, I've seen freaking plays do a much better job than what this movie was attempting to do. And I can't even say that with all seriousness because attempting is basically another word for trying, which clearly is not the case here. And this is a movie I would just as soon forget. Just like there was no effort involved in making this movie, there's actually no effort involved in me remembering it because as soon as my eyes are not upon the clips, it is a welcome respite to have it just seep out of my head. The movie looked as though it was constantly overshadowed by the smoke monster from Lost. And smoke is exactly what it feels like in my mind. It's there one moment and gone the next. Thank goodness. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ulturi. You ask, we answer.